and welcome to the virtual worship gathering of Awakened Church. We hope this video finds you well and healthy as we go through this uncertain time. Also, if you have a need, please reach out through your missional community, uh, through the members of the spiritual leadership team, or to one of our co-leaders. We would love to see how we can help you, if we can help you, and do whatever we can. Please use this as a resource to speak with others and, and get together with your missional communities and celebrate in times we can be together. And remember, although we're apart, we're not alone. So please use this time and remember that the church still gathers, though we may be apart, we still gather and celebrate how faithful God is through all things. We meet in different buildings, in different towns. We speak in different languages and sing different hymns. We wear different clothing and have different gifts and talents. Yet, as we gather for worship, we become one body, one family in Christ. We join together with God as the kingdom of God comes and as God's will is done. Let us join with all our brothers and sisters in worship in true communion with God this day. With a broken heart, you picked me up. Now I'm set apart from the ash. I am born again, forever safe in the Savior's hands. You are more than my words could say. I'll follow you for all my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your way, forever free and unending. Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ending Oh, oh, oh You are alive in us Nothing can take your place You are darkest night let your love be the shining light breaking chains that were holding me you sent your son down to set me free everything of this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face I will live that your will be done I won't stop till your kingdom comes Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ending Oh, 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 you are You are, you are, you are 
my freedom lift you higher cause you are you are you are my freedom lift you higher lift you higher to love to love to love never ending oh 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 you are alive in us nothing can take your place you are
Hey guys, I'm glad to be back with you this week as we are moving uh, forward in our new series, Illuminate, where we're looking at the book of 1 John. And last week, Pastor Philip gave an introductory message where he looked at the book as a whole and he pulled out and highlighted different ideas and themes uh, that we'll see as we go through the book. And uh, one of those uh, that he mentioned that he highlighted for us that we're going to be seeing as we jump into chapter one today is this idea that God is light. And so that's something that's present in chapter one that we're going to look at and kind of break down that idea a little bit today. And so what I want to do, chapter one isn't super long, but we're going to uh, pick up in verse five and go through the end of the chapter. And so I've broken that up into two pieces. And so what I'd like for us to do is read it, and then we'll come back and break it down a little bit. So um, we're uh, picking up in verse five. This is from the NIV. It says, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So I think the first time that I looked at this, uh, the first thing that jumped out at me was what does it look like to walk in the light and what does it mean? What does it look like to walk in the darkness? And so I started thinking of Um, actions, behaviors, practices that are good for me to do. And so those, that's what it, that's what leads me to walk in the light. And so that's what I should do. And then here's uh, behaviors, practices, uh, actions that are bad to do. And so they lead me to walk in darkness. And so I should pursue the things that are good and I should avoid the things that are bad. And I think that's an understandable way of approaching this passage, but I don't know that it's exactly the intent that the author intended to, to convey. And I think that it's easy for us as people, um, it's natural for us to want to put things into concrete camps uh, that are opposed to one another, right? To see things in very like uh, black and white ways where one is good and one is bad, whether it's light, dark, right, wrong, um, Jedi, Sith, right? Like it's easy for us to put things into two camps where one is bad and one is good. And it's easier for us to hold that than to hold any kind of tension of holding uh, two ideas at the same time. And so I think that that's more the kind of perspective that we want to bring to this passage is less, what are the things that I can do that are good? And what are the things that I can do that are bad? And rather, how am I uh, engaging with this larger idea of what it means to walk in light versus walking in darkness? And so the first idea that I want us to pull out of this is this idea that light brings life. Light brings life. And we see that in, in the natural world. Uh, if we look out where, where there is light, there is healthy and good things flourishing. And so I think that this is the way that we want to approach this. Uh, I think we see in the Gospels uh, a lot the, the Pharisees trying to lure Jesus into that dualistic trap, right? Of saying, okay, Jesus, is this thing good or bad? Or was this person right or wrong? And anytime they try to lure him into that, Jesus refuses to participate uh, in, in their kind of dualistic trap and instead goes to the bigger picture of, of what it means, what he's calling people into and what the kingdom of God looks like. And so I think that we want to do the same thing. And rather than get into this legalistic idea of these are good things to do and these are bad things to do, is uh, what does it look like for us to engage in all things in ways that bring light and life into our lives and into our relationships? Um, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, where he writes, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. And then he finishes that passage by saying, everything that you do, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And I I think that's right in line with how we should be looking at what it means to walk in the light uh, versus uh, what it means to walk in the darkness. And uh, how can everything that we do bring light and life into our lives and our relationships with other people? I think this is especially uh, pertinent right now uh, because some of us have more time on our hands right now than we've ever had. And so we have this burden of how are we spending our time and are we spending it in ways that are life bringing, that are light bringing, uh, that bring again, light and life into our lives and into our relationships with other people. And so I think this idea that everything is beneficial, everything, or excuse me, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Uh, it's just another way of saying just because you can do something doesn't mean you necessarily should do something. Um, and so the ways 
ways that we're spending our time during this time of social distancing, where we're not out about in the world, but uh, we're isolated into our homes way, way more than we ever have been before. I think it's super important that we ask that question about are the things that we are engaging in, um, are we engaging in them in ways that are bringing light and life? Just again, just because we can do something doesn't mean we necessarily should do something. Uh, you may have noticed by now that my my beard currently is is the longest it's ever been, and that's because when I grow my beard out, it goes through these really uh, uncomfortable, not very attractive phases. And so when I'm out about in the world, like I have the shame and the self-awareness to be like, I should probably trim this. Um, so just again, because you can do something doesn't mean you necessarily should do something. And so I think that that's really important as we have all this time right now, are we engaging in uh, the way that we're engaging in things? Are we engaging in uh, ways that are beneficial that are constructive, that are bringing light and life into our lives and into our relationships with other people. I want to pick up that passage again in verse eight and uh, uh, just picking up where we left off. This is what it says. It says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. So this brings us to the second idea uh, that I want to highlight from this is that not only does light bring life, uh, but light reveals truth. Uh, Light reveals truth. Light exposes, light eliminates the darkness and shows what was there. Light reveals truth. And I think that this is really relevant for us as we engage in our relationships and and we engage in community with other people. Uh, Awaken, we are a church of missional communities. And I think one of the things that is hardest uh, about living a life among community, living a shared life with other people, and one of the things that one of the reasons that a lot of people avoid that is because if we're participating in community the way that we should be, we cannot just project a version of ourselves that we want other people to see that may not necessarily be true. Um, because when we live in community and we live uh, in, in relationship with one another, the way that the gospel calls us to, then light reveals truth, right? Our, the, who we are comes to the forefront. And so we can't just project what we want people to see because the truth of, of the life that we're living is revealed. When we are living in fellowship with one another, uh, that means being transparent. And that's, that's uncomfortable for a lot of people. People don't like to do that. But uh, as, as, as the verse says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we try to project this image that we have everything all together and we try to avoid uh, our weaknesses and, and the shortcomings that we have in our life and only project what we want people to see, um, the light is not going to allow that to happen. Walking in light reveals truth. And so we're going to have to be transparent in our relationships with other people. Again, I think that this is especially pertinent uh, today because right now, uh, very literally, uh, everyone is is wearing masks. If you're leaving your house to go to the, the grocery store or, or some other, you know, kind of uh, important uh, essential uh, visit, I hope, um, you sh- see people walking around uh, with masks, or at least you should. If you're not walking around with masks, you should be. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Uh, but so when we go out, we, you see people everywhere right now wearing masks. And, uh, then when you get home, right, you can take off your mask. You don't have to wear it in your house because the people that are in your family that are in your household, um, you are in close enough relationship with them that you are already sharing the same space, sharing the same life, uh, again, in a literal sense, sharing the same germs, right? And so our, our relationships and our missional communities uh, should kind of reflect this, where figuratively, right, not literally right now, but figuratively, when we engage in our missional communities, we should be able to take off those masks because we don't need to project a version of ourselves that isn't. We don't need to protect people from the things in our lives that we feel like are less than or are not good enough because we are already living in such close, intimate relationship and community uh, with, with those people in our MCs that they are already aware, they're already exposed, we're already sharing those things together. And so our MCs should be a place where again, right now, figuratively, we can take those masks off and let the light that comes with walking, that living comes with living out the gospel in community, let that light reveal the truth of who we are so that we can be ourselves, be known and to fully know others in our community. 
So as we move into a time of, of reflection and discussion, uh, either with your, your families or with your missional communities, uh, there's a few questions that we wanted to, uh, that I wanted to, to give you to kind of help uh, reflect on this idea of walking in light and walking in darkness, this idea of light bringing life into your, our lives and how are we engaging in everything that we do in ways that bring light and life into our lives and our relationships with other people as well as this idea of living a life where the light reveals truth and we live a transparent lives among community. Uh, we have a few questions that we wanted to give you to kind of discuss how are we doing that and how can we do that better? And so the first question is, um, in a, in a larger sense, how does claiming one thing and living another hurt us and hurt the church? How does claiming one thing and living another hurt us and hurt the church. Uh, we see this in verse six. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. If we claim to be without sin in verse eight, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So how does claiming one thing and living another hurt us and hurt the church? The next question, this is more of a reflective question. Uh, what in my life right now does not reflect walking in the light rather than walking in darkness? What in my life right now does not reflect walking in the light rather than the darkness? So again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking less about what are the things that I'm doing and rather how am I engaging in those things, right? How am I living my life in ways that reflect walking in the light and bringing light into my life and relationships rather than the darkness? And the final question is, uh, what step can I take to bring what I claim and how I live into sync with one another? What step can I take to bring what I claim and how I live into sync with one another? So we hope you'll... Uh, and take some time discussing this with your missional communities and, and putting these things into practice. Uh, we're so glad that you are continuing to engage even in ways that look different than they normally do. And we challenge you to continue to cultivate a community, to foster community with one another and to continue to live a sent life on mission and to look at what it means to thrive rather than just survive this time of social distancing. So we love you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in missional communities this week and uh, God bless. God bless.